Okay, Age of Conan is played over three ages, although the third age can end early if someone attempts to crown Conan as king, which we'll kind of talk about later. Um, an age, the length of an age is determined by these, um, well, basically determined by the number of adventures, which is four adventures in each age, and each adventure, the length of which is determined by these, the length of this adventure track. So when all the tokens are off the adventure track, the current adventure ends, we flip over another adventure. When all the adventures are flipped over, the age ends, we do the what's called the end of age phase, and then uh, we start the next age. If it's the end of the third age, the game ends and we do final scoring. The end of the game, the, you, you, you score victory points by um, the number of provinces you control, um, whether uh, you've accomplished any of these objectives, um, and then you also get bonus points for uh, having the most gold, um, having the most of these Krom Count the Dead tokens, and also having the most adventure uh, tokens in in each category. So you at the end of the game count up all those bonuses. Uh, the one with the most empire points wins the game. Those are the victory conditions. Okay, let's look at the turn order. There's actually two kind of turn phases. There's the regular turns, and then there's what's called the age change phase, which we'll look at. Um, in a minute. First let's look at the regular turn order. So at the beginning of the game you're going to do a bid for who controls Conan on the first turn and um, I'll go over how bids work later but um, in this example I've just uh, I've said that uh, Hyperborea wins um, Conan. So the first turn the uh, Conan player is going to play first so he gets this little first player token. So the first thing that you do in a phase is if you are the Conan player, you have an extra step where you can decide if you want to move Conan. Um, basically the Conan player will look at Conan, look at his objective marker, decide what he wants to do. He can, uh, and he can move Conan to any adjacent province. Now if that move moves Conan closer to his objective, then he gets to take the first adventure token off of the adventure track. Now if he doesn't, if it doesn't, he, he doesn't get to take that, that adventure, and, and actually it's just discarded. That, that token is just discarded. So after the Conan player has done that, then he selects one of these fate dice, which we rolled at the beginning of the game, and he picks one, and he takes one action uh, out of the available ones for that, that icon, and then it moves on to the next player's turn. And that player takes another Fate dice does that action. If the there are no fate dice left, then the first player just rolls them and keep going. So basically, we keep doing that until we hit an age change, which happens when you, all the adventures um, have been used. When you when when the last the last uh, adventure token is removed from the last adventure and then you do the age change phase which we will go over in a second. Okay, so like I mentioned before, when Conan finishes his last adventure out of the four adventures, the something is triggered called the age change phase. Um, and there's uh, seven steps to that. The first is to resolve raids. So I mentioned before that um, the Conan player can sometimes leave these raid tokens in different provinces. So, um, so say the Conan player had two army guys here, two army units here, uh, and there was a raid token. At this point, he would have to uh, get rid of one of those army uh, units to take away that raid token. The next step is to collect gold. Uh, players receive five gold and then two gold for every tower or city control marker they have on the board. Um, in this, they also receive empire points for any objectives that they fulfilled and then the new objectives are dealt out. Um, after that, the, the players have the opportunity to build cities and, raid, and raise troops, uh, placing them in their home province 
and then they have an opportunity to spend some gold to also to purchase units, emissaries, kingdom cards, strategy cards, uh, that sort of thing by spending the gold that they've accumulated. The next part is to the next step is to assign artifacts and also the Conan uh, card, which we talked about a little bit before. There's these artifacts; they give you various bonuses, and so each age they're going to be redistributed to the players, and we'll go over that uh, at the end near the end of the video. And then you just prepare the adventure deck by dealing out four new cards and then you re all the play on the table cards are automatically refreshed. Usually if you have a play on the table card, which let me see if I can find one. Yeah, so here's one. So you, you pay two gold to play this card and then it stays on the table. You can I'm not sure if you can see this, but it says play on the table uh, on it. And so after you use it, it's turned over, you can pay two gold during your turn to flip it back over and use it again. But if you don't, at the uh, end of the age phase, the age change phase, then all of these cards are automatically refreshed without having to pay any gold. So that's basically the age change phase. Um, next we're going to look at the different actions available to you on your turn, depending upon the different fate dice um, roll. Okay, let's take a look at the fate dice icons and what you can do on your turn. So here are the uh, five different fate dice icons. This first one is a court plus Conan dice. So in this one, the first thing you do is you take a Conan action and then you take a court action. The Conan action uh, depends on if you're the Conan player or not. If you're the player currently controlling Conan, then you can move Conan to an adjacent uh, province, and then you can drop a raider token. Uh, what did I do with the raider? Oh, raider token, either in the province that Conan's in, or the province, uh, or an adjacent province. Um, you do not take uh, an adventure token when you move Conan, though. Now, if you're not the Conan player, then you uh, pick up the first adventure token from the adventure track. And you get to keep it. Okay, so after you do a Conan action, then you do a court action. Uh, a court action, you can either draw one card from your kingdom deck, or and one card from your strategy deck, or you can draw two cards from the strategy deck, or, or you could play one... Uh, of your kingdom cards. The next icon is the military icon. With the military icon you can do one of three things. You can either move two army units into adjacent friendly provinces, which actually neither one of those would be friendly, but you can move you can move them into friendly provinces. Oops, sorry. Or you can move one army unit into a friendly, or one army into a friendly province, and then start an attack on a different province. Um, so you could either then you that will allow you either to start a military campaign like I was talking about before, or to continue a military campaign that you've already started. The last thing that you can do is you could build one army unit in up to two different friendly provinces. The next icon we're going to talk about is the Intrigue icon. The Intrigue icon is similar to the military except it deals with emissaries. So you can either move two friendly emissaries, you can move one friendly emissary and start one Intrigue con contest. Or you can move one emissary, then collect gold in an enemy province containing a friendly emissary by removing the emissary located in that province. So basically you can sacrifice one of your emissaries for some gold. And then the last thing you can do is you could build one emissary in a friendly province. Okay, the last two are, um, this one is a military or uh, intrigue action, which you can use it either for any of the military options that I talked about or any of the intrigue options that I talked about. Now one of the caveats on that is that you can't use one of one of these dice if you could use either one of these. So for example, 
uh, if there was an intrigue dice and and like if this was the pool, I couldn't pick this and do an intrigue because I could have just took took that one. And then this last icon is a wild one. You can do basically anything, um, anything on a military intrigue or a court. You can't do the Conan. But the same kind of thing. You can't do something with this dice that you could have done with another die that's still left in the pool. So those are the fate dice. That's going to make up using those fate dice for actions is going to make up the majority of your turn. Um, next, we're going to look at some of the systems in the game, such as bidding and um, combat.